we'll go on and dive into the first one here, and that would be the San Diego State Aztecs. And, of course, coached by Brady Hoke. I believe this is the third season with Hoke at the Realm. Uh, he has done a a pretty good job. Uh, excuse me, the helm and not the realm. What the, what the hell am I talking about? Um, so, last season, 12-2, and two, pretty damn good record. Uh, none good. of that. None of that was from the offense, Chris. Like, <laughs> if no. they could get and the offense rolling. With Brady Hoke. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. Um, it, that defense is still rolling right along, even after Rocky Long left. Uh, you know, they are they are rolling. They do have some massive losses on the roster, though. Defensive end Cam Thomas, uh, tight end Daniel Bellinger, the punter Matt Areza, of course, punt god. Uh, then, of course, you got you know both guards that were gone. Uh, the running back Greg Bell. Quarterback Taylor Hawkins, um, guard Chris Martinez, etc. Uh, defense is going to be replacing some people, but they've also got some really, really good guys coming back. Uh, let's talk first about the offense. You have got to find a way to open this offense. I mean, this is just at what what they have done over and over again is not going to work. Uh, they were number one hundred four in PPA per drive, and that's just not going to win championships. Uh, the Virginia Tech transfer quarterback, Braxton Burmeister, is going to take over the offense. They are losing three starting linemen. They are losing three of their top four receivers, and they're losing the running back, Greg Bell. But with as bad as the offense was last year, I don't know that losing those guys necessarily matters. Of course, I say that, and it's preseason, but you, you get the point. Uh, the offensive line transfers that they brought in, they average six foot four and 330 pounds. Now, they are replacing three starters, like I mentioned, but I don't think size is going to be an issue. The offense coordinator, Jeff Heklinski, uh, is is likely still going to lean on the run here. But if they can find a way to open up this offense at all, that is going to help out the defense quite a bit. Uh, moving over to the defense, uh, you know, it's been the bedrock of the program for a long time. That's likely not going to change this season. Uh, they have finished top 21 in scoring defense six of the last seven years. Uh, the question here, of course, is going to be who replaces Cam Thomas. He had 27 tackles for loss last year. Uh, there are, again, still a bunch of studs on the defense. You got Keyshawn Banks, defensive end, linebacker Caden McDonald. Um, you got the safety, Patrick McMorris. Like you, you have got some real studs on this roster. Uh, going to give me your initial impressions on this. Uh, this. This team looks like they are going to compete again this year. Yep, yep, I agree with that completely. Uh, I think this team is going to be really good, probably the, the premier team in this conference, uh, in my opinion. Um, they lost some guys, but I think defensive guys, they've just been – it's just a system that they've been running for a long time, and, and, and they seem to know what they're doing there. Offensively, I do not believe it's possible for them to be worse. And so <laughs> I think with a, with a Power 5 talent quarterback coming um, in transfer, uh, that should help them take a – Big step forward, got a lot of transfer, in, and you brought up the, the offensive line revamping. I like this team. I think they're going to be really good. Now, schedule is a little bit different, okay? They got a couple of big power five teams on there. I don't think they'll lose to all of them, but I think they might. And, um, you know, I've got them not hitting that double-digit mark again, but I think safely eight and four wouldn't shock me if they're nine and, and then uh, three. That's eight. I've got eight and four on this team. Um, you mentioned the offense. Uh, they were number 126 in explosive play rate uh, via their passing game last year. It don't get much they, worse they, than they that. Don't, but, but they don't do that, though. Like, Agreed. This is one of those things. We talked about this with another team not too long ago. I don't remember when. It, it was like, Utah State. Like, yeah. Like, yeah Utah State doesn't run the ball. Yeah, with, with the run the ball. Like, you can't say, well, well they're just really bad at it. Yeah, but if they're really good at all the other things and that's just something they don't do, then, you know. Like, at what point in time are we going to realize they're winning ball games in spite of that, and they don't care about that? Well, I think that it, see if Utah State can at least say, you know, we're really good at throwing the football, so we don't worry about the we don't worry about running it, right? With San Diego State, they don't run the ball well either. Like they were number ninety eight in rushing success rate. Um, you, like <laughs> you're right, but the problem is, but the problem is, Gary, is if you can't throw the ball well, that destroys your defense because you're going to turn the ball over. If you can't run the ball well, that doesn't hurt your defense at all. It eats up clock. It has you on the sidelines just as long as you would be um, normally. So, like, it doesn't – like, not a lot changes on the thing that you're really good at. True, true. If you try to throw the ball and you suck at throwing the ball, 
you're going to crush that great defense of yours. Yeah, no, you you were not wrong. You were not wrong. Uh, as we said, the defense is still going to be strong, even with losing Cam Thomas. Uh, the question is, can Brady Hoke adapt and evolve a little bit? Uh, even if he doesn't, this is still going to be a really good team. I've got them 8-4. and four. I've got them losing to Arizona and Utah. Got them losing at Boise, and I've got them losing at Fresno State. Uh, could we see them beating any of those teams? Absolutely. Yeah. They beat Utah last I, year. I, I, like, I actually, the reason I said 9-3 and, 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 and three is because is I, I think there's a really good chance they, they might beat Arizona. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. I, I think they're I think, favorite. I think they're, a better, I think they're a better team than Arizona. Uh, the yeah. early lines, if I'm not mistaken, oh, are they favored? I think, yeah, I think they're favored over Arizona in the uh, in the early lines. Um, I'm going to look at Fanduel right quick and see. Uh, but look, looking at this team, like if they beat Fresno on the road, uh, would not shock me. If they beat Boise even on the road, would not shock me. And they did beat Utah last year. Granted, the game was at home, uh, so I, you know, this none of it would surprise me whatsoever. So I, I think uh, possibly. Let's see. Da, da, da. Uh, FanDuel does not have it listed. So, um, but yeah, I, I think uh, I think that they're favored by like just a few points. Um, yeah, well, and they play on the road, so that doesn't surprise me. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's not like Arizona's got some wild home crowd. No, no, absolutely not. Yeah. Uh, it's the first week of the season, and San Diego State. You're not walking into the big house there, okay? San Diego State is favored by five. And they're not playing at Arizona. They play Arizona at home. And, yeah, favored by five with a total of 50 and a half. That's, uh, that's per oh, circuit. Yeah. So, yeah, it wouldn't shock me if they beat Arizona. Uh, I do think Arizona is going to be uh, drastically improved better. this year. We, we think they're going to be better, but they got a long way to improve before they're better than good uh, G5 teams, right? I, I think you're right. I think you're right on that. All right, let's uh, – They were pretty far down that, down that rabbit hole. Bad. Oh, big time. Big time. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.